All right, first one from Petit Paulette 072. Ben Askren, worst outfit of all time at the UFC 235 press conference. I didn't see it. I didn't see this press conference. Is it there? Nope. There's a black screen. Oh, no. Oh, it's, a, it's just a sharp. It's him with a dress shirt, slacks, and sandals. God, it's not, it's not fitted either. He didn't get that custom made. <laughs> Definitely God not God damn it, Ben. You know I love you, dude. Your style's atrocious. You know what? It's just something in most wrestlers don't have style. For whatever reason, most wrestlers just don't give a shit. Um, any wrestler I ever trained with, any wrestler I ever hung out with, they're not exactly the most fashion forward peeps on the planet. It's Ben Astrid and doing that. Ben, can I, could you just do me a solid, you know I love you, could you just not wear sandals and pants? Just, you, you're not even from California, dude. There's only one fighter on the planet who can do that, his name's your favorite. Unless you're referred to as the California kid, you cannot wear sandals with pants. No bueno, bro. <laughs> uh, Masvidal before that beat Carlos Condit, Matt Brown. So he's doing the damn thing. Gets a title shot against Woodley. Woodley sets the blueprint how to beat him. Then uh, Colby Covington does it. Then Usman does it. So he's lost to the creme de la creme. And then he fights uh, Lehman Good, who's first team all body. Dude is bodied the fuck up. Yeah. Could come right off Jersey Shore. Could probably make a fine living doing the same thing Johnny Walker did for a number of years, stripping, <laughs> yeah. if he wanted to in America. Damn looking good feller. I want you to take this into consideration. Uh, Layman Good, who is a Bellator champion, correct? He's a Bellator world champion. Comes over to the UFC. Obviously has a lot of skills. When you fight Damian Maya, your entire training camp, before you fly to Brazil on that 17-hour flight, and trust me, I've been there. When you fly to Brazil on that 17-hour flight, your entire training camp is don't let Damian Maya get a hold of your back. Do not let him on your back. Do not let him get a rear naked choke. Once he's on the back, it is game, set, match. What happens in the first 30 seconds? Damian Maya gets on your back. And if you're a freaking Mr. Good, you're thinking, ah, shit, man, we've gone over this. And then you get a rear naked choke. And you get back on the plane. You fly 17 hours thinking about your entire waste of time on that goddamn training camp getting black belts to stay on your back and how you got out of it. Well, you're not dealing with your normal black belt. You're dealing with Damian Maya. So, that's what you get, man. It's a bummer. Well, so, real quick, he was the Bellator Season 7, season seven Welterweight Tournament finalist, mm -hmm. but didn't win, but he was a champion of CFFC. So, he's never a Bellator champion? No. No, so he lost in the, the tournament finals, but he was a champion from CFFC. But never in Bellator. Not Bellator. Wait, hold on. The further we look, he was Bellator World Champion Season 1 Welterweight Tournament Final. Yeah, so he's a champion. Yeah. Won the Bellator Welterweight World title. Uh, that's right. 2009. They lost to Ben Askren. Ben Askren kind of molly -whopped them. And then he... Oh yeah, because he lost the belt to Ben Askren. That's how Ben Askren became World Champion. That's right. Oh, yeah, but then you get fucking Damian Maya. That's not fun. I'd love to see Damian Maya and Ben Askren. Um, yeah, man, so you could give it to Charles Oliveira. You could give it to Damian Maya. And then, of course, these next two are, could be your co-MVPs because you got Jose Aldo and Marlon Marias. But Jose Aldo versus Hanato Mocano. Um, and Mocano is a big favorite. Rangy guy on a win streak, fucking monster. We thought we, he's gonna walk through Jose Aldo. We thought Jose Aldo was done, and Jose Aldo looked good. I thought he looked really good. Do he look like vintage Jose Aldo? No, but he looked good. He looked really good. And he, when, once he got uh, Hanato hurt, he fucking just took advantage of it and they stopped the fight. Saw Hanato say they stopped. He thought they stopped a little early. I disagree. This isn't a TJ Cejudo situation. I thought Hanato was getting fucked up and he's only getting more damage, especially when he landed that uppercut. See his eyes roll back. We never really saw that with TJ. Uh, I thought it was a fair stoppage, but uh, I found myself rooting for Jose Aldo pretty hard in that. My like, God, I hope he wins, man. And it's, I, I like Hanato. I think he has a great career ahead of him. I just, I don't know. I felt almost bad for Jose Aldo, right? His, his, he's some uh, regard him as the best featherweight of all time, pound for pound champ, right? Featherweight. And then his career, especially in America, was defined by getting knocked out in whatever 17 or 19 seconds by freaking Conor McGregor, which isn't really fair. But, you know, they play that highlight over and over because obviously they're building up Conor's amazing fight. Um, but yeah, that, I, I found myself rooting for Jose Aldo big time. And look, Jose Aldo. A pretty good claim to, to fight for the title next. You know, he beat Jeremy Stevens, who was uh, uh, on a hot streak, and then and that's another performance of the night. He beat Hanato 
uh, as well. So um, back to back. Before that, you lost to Max Holloway. Again, no shame in that. Lost to Max Holloway. And he's never beat Max Holloway. So, um, all right. So you could give it to Jose Aldo, but um, what Marlon Marais did to Asan Sal is remarkable. Unbelievable what he did to him. You know, he so he's only lost one fight in the UFC, and it was his first one, and they gave him a Sansa right off the bat, which is, uh, you can understand that because he's a multiple time defending world champion from World Series of Fighting, and uh, a Sansa is, you can't call him a gatekeeper because a gatekeeper is a guy where you got to beat that guy to get to those kind of uh, top tier guys. A Sansa is a top tier guy, but when you beat him, you get a title shot. That's how it works with a Sansa. He's always one mark away from the title shot. He's ne he never gets a title shot, but if you beat him, you're ready for the title shot. So um, I can't remember the last time a Sansa has been beat. But just before you change it, Chin, you look at what fucking Marlon Rice has done in the UFC. So he lost split decision to Sansa. A lot of people thought he won. Either way, split decision. That's his first fight. Then he goes on to beat John Dotson. Then he fucking murks uh, Aljamain Sterling, which is ridiculous in the first round in a minute. Then they give him Jimmy Rivera, who is such a bad man majama, and he starches him in 33 seconds. And you're like, all right, dude, he just caught Jimmy Rivera. Jimmy's going to be back. Let's give him uh, a Sansa once again before you give him a title shot. Then he destroys a Sansa. When's the last time a Sansa's been finished? It's been a quite some goddamn time. Nope. Uh, KO Eric Punch, Koch. Eric Koch. 2011. So eight years, kids. Eight motherfucking years since he's been finished. Your right, favor finished him in 2010. Tell you, he's a tough customer, man. Can you give any kind of an update on on Habib's suspension? Uh, from what I know, from talking to Habib, he's he's pretty much very loyal to his guys. And um, the thing about the suspension is he, he doesn't care. He's like, whatever, you guys, they want me to come back and, and do an anti-bullying thing. He was the one being bullied. He's not going to do that. Screw that. He's, that's his attitude. He ain't going to fight for him. He says he's not going to fight in, in Vegas. And for me, that sucks because I love gambling. But shit, <laughs> you know, got to stick, stick with what he wants. And, you know, he, he says he won't come back until his guys are off to suspension. And I, I kind of have to agree with that. You know, he's sticking to his guys because all they did was try to defend him. And the, if anybody should have got suspended a year, it should have been him, not not his not his uh, teammates that went there to try to help. For God's sake, his cousin didn't do anything but try to jump over the cage, and he gets you know Connor sucker punches him. And what does he do? He just defends himself. So now you're in trouble for that much time. <coughs> right. Uh, yeah, just, it doesn't make sense at all. It's bullshit. Yeah. It doesn't. I just doesn't. It doesn't look good when the guy um when he jumped over and when he hit Connor from behind and believe and first of all let me tell you that part that part I don't advocate at all yeah that, that's that I think if it wasn't for that that that's really what put it over the edge but I agree a hundred percent I said it last week I felt that uh Khabib was the one getting bullied I felt they broke him in a sense where he held everything into the fight and then Connor just taps out he, he still had some more in him he's like that's it you're yeah. saying you're saying uncle you're done and it's like now it's time to be the top. I don't know. I, don't get me. <laughs> I get started on it. People think I'm anti Connor. You're 100% correct on yeah. that. That's what happened. And you know, and I, I was training Habib for two months out about, yeah. okay, he's going to come after your dad. He's going to come after your family. He's going to come after your country. I expect all of this because that's what he does. He touches all the buttons. And I yeah. thought he was going to come after me, but I wasn't sure because I'm thinking, well, shit, I don't really. I, there's really nothing to come after me for, so I'm thinking, ah, 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 but I was ready for him coming after me too. But but realistically, it would have looked stupid coming after me. There's really nothing bad you could say about me, you know. It really wasn't. Well, I, I looked at the whole scenario, you know. Well, uh, and, and was Habib uh, prepared for that at all? Because he seemed like it really got to him. And I understand it's a very personal stuff, but knowing that going in and knowing you're going to fight Connor and knowing, I mean, the disadvantage to it is it's, it's insulting. And it's enraging. The advantage is it, it probably puts in another, you know, God knows how many more pay per views because people either want to see Connor win or see him get his ass kicked. So, was Habib prepared for that at all mentally, even that you had talked about it? 
he was as prepared as he could be, to be honest with you. I don't know anybody else that would have held it together like he did. I probably wouldn't have if I was a fighter and, and I was fighting him. I probably would have attacked him at the press conference and all that just because of all the things he was saying. And, you know, they wouldn't let you talk and, and just keep talking, you know, calling your dad a rat, calling your dad a, you know, a terrorist. I mean, you know, he loves his dad. His dad's everything to him, sure. you know, so... That was a big sore subject, and, and uh, you know, it, you know, you can't ever do nothing about it. That I wish fighters would just have a, a rule of thumb to stay away from those three subjects. You know, I just don't think that family, you know, religion and, and, and country are are things you should ever, as a fighter, you know, you should you should never talk about those things. And I think all fighters should, you know. But of course, it's a free country; you can do what you want. It's just so very low. I'm sorry. It. I was just gonna say it's very low class. It's just very low class. I don't care how much money you make, you could be a millionaire how many times over, but you, you it just shows, it's very low class to talk about somebody's family, and you know what I mean, innocent people, and then, yeah, I just think it's just a real, like, a dirtbag thing to do, personally. Yeah, yeah I don't, I don't like it, I, I wish people wouldn't do it, but you know, they, it doesn't matter what you and I think that, no. they're gonna still do it, that's just, and they're allowed to, so, and they're never going to be able to, uh, no one's ever going to be able to put stop to that because of the freedom of speech, so, you know, you can't stop it, no way. Yeah, it seems like, I guess there are certain things that, that just get to everybody. The only one who seemed like he wasn't really offended by anything was Nate. He didn't seem like any of it got to him, but everyone else, like Josie Aldo, you could see, I mean, he came in in the 13 seconds he got, he was so angry at Connor. So there is something strategic to it, I guess, when it works. Oh, no. Well, it worked. It was a good uh, strategic plan. That's why I, as soon as I knew we had the match, that's why every day I talked to him. Every day, two or three times a day, I would say, what's going to happen? What's he going to do? Yes, coach. Yes, coach. And then, so, you know, like, for instance, uh, the press conference, right? Habib says, coach, what do you think? I'm going to show up like a professional on time. If this guy does not show up at the, after 50 minutes while I'm doing my talk, I'm leaving. And I said, good, <laughs> because I, this is not about him. I'm doing my responsibility. He wants to be unprofessional. He can do that. And that's what, exactly what happened. You know, Connor showed up late and got beat to pass. And uh, what, what, did, what did you think about the fine that they gave? Uh, that seemed like a, a, Habib, a, a little bit steep, the fine that they gave him in Vegas. I think they did that, and I think it's unfair, and I think they did that to show a president that don't do that. And, and you know, okay, I get that part. You can't, you can't jump over the fence because, it, it, you know, that's bad. You know, so I'm not going to condone that. I can't. You know, we were definitely Habib was wrong on that. I just, everything they did was up to that point, you know, how they handled it, I, I think they handled it wrong. They wanted to send a strong message, so they used Habib as the, as, as the GOAT on that one, you know, scapegoat, you know. It's like, hey, you're the, you're the guinea pig we're going to do this on. So uh, I don't think they did it right. I think punishing them, yes, I think all that. And uh, but, but how they did it, and uh, I, I, I just think nobody got hurt. It got broken up within, what, 30, 40 seconds? Yeah. Was, you know, and nobody got hurt. Was Connor uh, a little more effective on the ground defensively than you guys thought he would be? Did he do a little better on the ground than you anticipated? I thought he was going to do as good as he did. I, he actually did better. Their game plan was better than I thought. Uh, they came out with a really good game plan. And uh, instead of waiting for us to come at him, which was what we were waiting for, he came at us. And we were prepared for that, too, but not as much. We worked more on the counter, uh, the counter defense that Connor was going to throw at us. And he didn't. He, he came at us. So that was really good on Connor's part. Uh, I, I thought, and, and I still think that guy's a great fighter. Uh, you know, he's a great fighter. Sure. Uh, and, and so I knew we were up against a great fighter. Yeah, I think sometimes people, uh, because he talks so much, people, the same mistake they made with Ali, where they, they, he talks so much that he's not an effective fighter, but he, he is a good fighter. Um, yeah, and it's, it's the same thing like I was saying with Al, you know. Freaking Al, it's like when we got Al, everybody goes, oh, you got Al, and I go, well, you guys don't understand. That's the toughest matchup we could have gotten. Al, Al was no joke, and, and I said that, and, and I'm so glad that he, that, that he showed everybody that he is the legit thing, you know. Al was no joke. You know, oh, and he thanks, proved it. Man. Yeah, no, I, I love Al. And I'll tell you right now, you got me thinking, if he ever got that fight with uh with Connor, like I hope he does, oh I'd be fucking attacked. I'd, I'd be crucified. Yeah. <laughs> you know Connor would attack me. There'd be short fat ball guy jokes oh, all day long. I think you'd be the one he attacked me. A hundred percent. I'd go eight mile on him though. Big. I would do like M&M yeah. and eight mile. I'd just be like, yeah, I'm fat, I'm bald, I eat pizza. I'd just go that route. Hey, I wanted to ask you too. Uh, now, if Habib decides in solidarity to sit out, 
What are your thoughts on them possibly doing an interim title fight? I mean, I don't. Under, I mean, I think Tony Ferguson has got to be next in line. So who even fights for an interim belt? You don't make Ferguson fight for it again. I mean, has that been spoken about at all, or is that something you worry about? Uh, no, I don't worry about it. The UFC is the boss. They always make the right decisions for the company, not necessarily for the fighters, but they make the right decisions for the company. And because of the one-year suspension and historically what they've always done, they're going to do an interim title. And, I mean, honestly, you can't do an interim title without Tony being involved, at least asking Tony if he wants to fight for the interim title. And then this is the way I look at it. It would probably be Dustin and Tony for the interim title, if not Al. Al and Dustin for if, if Tony declines, I think Al and and uh, you know and uh, which one calls should be for fight for the Poirier. title. Like now, Dustin, yeah. now do you see? But you see Tony as the next logical fight for Habib. Yeah, yeah. if you're looking at if you're looking at it from a point of a sports, yeah, they're hands down. It has to be Tony. But if you're looking at it from from a prize fighting, no, he's not because he won't make the most money. But he he deserves it from a sports. Uh, point of view, if you know what I'm saying. Well, who do you see then? If it's, if not Tony, who do you see? Well, for me, you got to understand it's a prize fight, right? Sure. So we're always looking for the biggest prize fight. I mean, who's the biggest prize fight for Daniel Cormier? Brock Lesnar. So who do I want? Brock Lesnar. So who's the biggest prize fight for for Habib again? For me, and this, I'm not speaking for Habib because Habib doesn't uh, sure. doesn't think like I do. I'm, I'm thinking Conor rematch only because I think that that'll do great numbers again, and uh, so it's a lot of money for him. So I look at it from that point of view. But from from the point of who deserves the title shot, sure. you know, it's, it's it's definitely Tony. Well, has now uh, now has Habib said he did not want to fight Conor again? I, I appreciate you being honest about that, that. That's the fight you'd like to see him take because it's definitely the biggest money fight. When into the fourth round, which is better than a lot of people thought Connor would do. Um, I mean, do, has he spoken about that, or has he indicated that he might be open for that? He has, from everything he said, he he doesn't deserve it. So, so he's not he's not he's not down with the Connor thing from what what from what I read and what he's kind of indicated to me. But would he be willing to fight a guy like a guy like a Ferguson who does is the deserving uh, contender for a lot less money yeah. than he would get for Connor? Yes, he would because he's not about the money. Okay. He, 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 he has an, uh, uh, I am. Ali is for sure. But no, no, not Habib. So do you, you know think? How that goes? And you and you were saying that Connor sells and Habib doesn't sell. Just has that changed a little bit? Uh, I think stuff like that that whole bus incident, which became such a story. Uh, does that is Habib in, in any way look at that as like yeah it was awful it was annoying but it did raise his profile in the eyes of people who are not necessarily hardcore fight fans because he was the kind yeah, of the target so of that. It raised them really high, and if you think about it, right, what, what's he doing now? Look at Habib's Instagram. My God, he's meeting every damn president in the, the Muslim <laughs> Muslim arena, man. It's like Jordan. He was in Israel. I mean, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi. You know, I, I mean, he's met so many damn presidents that are requesting him to come. It's amazing, you know, what this has done for his popularity. I think. Outside of pay per view, Habib has to be number one in the world uh, now, the biggest star in the world. Not on pay per view, I think Connor still is, yeah. but as far as the, the overall people, the love, the love for the people, I think Habib's number one in the world now. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure all the Muslim countries too, especially after the shit Connor was saying. Uh, you know, he yep. was kind of, uh, you know, he was a hero for choking him out like that. Yep, yep, two point two point four billion. Remember, two point four billion strong. That's that's pretty hefty uh, amount of people. And the fine, I feel again, was really hefty, and I feel that was ridiculous. But I'll tell you right now, what was also ridiculously good is that picture was amazing. That picture of him jumping out of the cage like an eagle. I don't want to bring it up again because I don't condone it. But holy shit, Javi, it was a fucking awesome picture. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I saw that damn picture on some because so many people pirated that, and Habib doesn't make any money off of that. Wow. And I saw one with the Nike Air 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 Habib. It was a red, you know, red silhouette. Man, I loved it. I wanted that one. And then, and, and of course, I couldn't condone it. But I was like, God damn it, I want. So I tell Habib, hey Habib, you know, you know, I love that picture. La la la. He goes, Coach, why don't you just make one like that and put an AKA on it? So I was thinking, yeah, let's do an AKA with the with the him flying in the air, you know. And, and uh, I was like, ah, we still haven't done it, but you know, some people will go, well, you're taking advantage of the bad situation and monetizing it, and I'm, yeah, it's true. But then I look how many people already made a lot of money off of it sure. that weren't even involved. So if anybody should be able to uh, to, to monetize, uh, uh, that should be us, right? 
a a hundred percent and i will buy the i'll buy two let me let me know if you come out with those shirts because i think exactly. that, that picture is i'll tell you i'm not happy the thing went down but i'm happy somebody no. I'm, I'm glad they got the picture of that no i thought Great my book. whole life was, was ending when i saw that i was i was almost i was i was so shocked i was like oh my god yeah you know, well I, He's doing great now, though. Yeah, he sure. Has he gotten any endorsements or anything like that? Like a guy, a guy like that, he's, he's a quiet, uh, oh, kind of soft-spoken guy. Yeah, man, he's making so much money. I don't know exactly. But he's making a lot of money, guys. Oh, good for him. Good, good. Well, listen, man, it was a real pleasure talking to you. Um, thank you for coming on the show. If you have not already... Hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.